Namaskar, welcome to Honest Astrologer and as discussed, uh, I, I promise that I will take your questions on Moon. So first of all, thank you for tremendous response to the Moon video and you guys had asked uh, more than 125 questions. So I have sorted a few questions which were repeat in nature. I am sorry I couldn't take personal questions because personal questions cannot be answered on a public platform. For that you can contact us on the number given on the screen for a consultation. Now uh, I have taken these questions which were repeated in nature. Several people were asking the same questions so I have combined them and I will try to answer that them in a concise and practical manner. So let us start. Har Har Mahadev, Om Som Somaya Nama. Let us take the first question. So the first question is the impact of Moon plus Shani. So I did not realize so many people are going to ask this question. So I will create an entire maybe half an hour video on this thing. But one thing I would like to say is that this is not necessarily a bad combination. It is called Wish Yoga. There is a reason for it. Because your emotions get choked. Like Mahadev has wish here. You have your emotions choked here. You cannot express them. And people with this yoga, I have often seen they become very successful in life. So that's the good side of this yoga. But these are the people who will sacrifice a lot for their family but will not find to say I time to say I love you or show you know small gestures of love. These are very shani dominated people. So imagine your moon is like a flowing water, your emotions are like flowing water. The cold energy of Shani freezes those emotions. So the emotions get frozen. Then even the negative emotions get frozen. So you are carrying all that wish in you. So how do you solve this? One, uh, I think people around these uh, guys need to understand that they will never be very expressive. Disciplined, very much. Serious, definitely. Uh, a little brooding, but they will never be happy-go-lucky types. They would be very responsible. They would be very mature. They will make dreams sons and daughters. Although with mothers, they usually have a difficult relationship, particularly later in life. But uh, when it comes to winning in life, these guys have it. So if they decide to put their thought into something that I want to achieve this in life, chances are they will be able to delay that gratification. They wouldn't run after instant gratification. They would have a lot of discipline. And this makes them good in terms of uh, business, in terms of careers. And a lot of sannyasis have this yoga because these people do not have that innate need to have a family or belong to it. In fact, they think at a bigger level. So they would go out and help uh, the poor. For example, Swami Vivekananda had this yoga. Uh, Swami Chidmayananda had this yoga. So two of our greatest sannyasis had this yoga. So this is not necessarily bad. Particularly in a man's chart, it's not that difficult. In a woman's chart, it's a little difficult. So I'll make an entire video around this. But it is not that bad. The best thing that you can do is to worship Shiva and do Rudra Bishak Puja and offer milk and water to Shiva Monday and Saturday. That's about it. Second most frequently asked question was around the 8th house moon. 8th house is the underworld. Okay, So soft planets don't do well in the 8th house, particularly moon. Moon is the mother. Imagine a mother sitting in the underworld in a gangster den or maybe sitting in front of an agori. That is a very scared mother. So these are the people who, can, who should never mess with the occult. These are the people who should avoid haunted places. These are the people who should avoid negative energies because they are very susceptible to these things. It is very important that you keep your environment positive. It is very important that you do not mess with energies which has anything to do with occult. I have often seen anxiety and depression in such cases and I have seen difficult relationship with the mother. And like I said, women with this combination have it really, really difficult. Please take psychiatric care. In India, we have this problem. If I break my bones, people will rush me to a hospital. But if I am under severe depression, people will say, kush ne kush ne ho you know, doesn't happen. 
Spiritual remedies have their place and medical remedies have their place. Please do not be shy of going to a psychiatrist. I would very strongly encourage anybody who is feeling depressed to take professional medical help. Next, uh, Cancer Moon. Why is it bad? Cancer is uh, Moon Thorn Rashi. Okay. So, have you guys ever wondered in Panch Mahapurush, you get all the other planets. Uh, Shani gives you a Panch Mahapurush Shash Yoga. Mars gives you Ruchak Yoga. Uh, so, uh, what is Panch Mahapurush? Panch Mahapurush is either that planet is in uh, exaltation or in its own sign sitting in trine or squares, Kendra or uh, Trikona. This thing doesn't apply to Rahu Ketu, okay, they don't own any houses, but why not Sun and Moon? Why is Leo Sun or uh, a Cancer Moon not considered so auspicious? One, these two are luminaries. Two, they have only one sign, so their signs can be really, really intense. So when Moon sits in Cancer, it brings a lot of Moon energy. Too much of anything is bad. So men are still able to handle this energy much better vis-a-vis -vis women. This can cause a lot of attachment, emotional issues. These people have an inner child who is usually wounded. They make great parents though, but they can cling to their children or they can cling to their partners and their mood swings are terrible. And if you have a cancer moon, Please watch out for yourself on a full moon or an Ashlesha moon. So, Cancer is the sign I have done my maximum research on because I myself have a Cancer moon. So, we will talk about it in uh, some other video in detail. Uh, next question is my pet peeve, Kemdrum Yoga. Okay. So, you know, there are a lot of yogas which are circulating in the market, uh, driven from old books, which do not work. One of them is Kendrum Yoga. When I read the first time about Kendrum Yoga, I remember I was like 12, 13 years old. I panicked and rushed to my father. Dad, I hope I don't have this one in my chat. And my father law no, you don't have it and don't worry about such yogas. They write anything. Then there was a lot of debate online. I did some research and that you know, that copybook definition said uh, these people would be poor, they will never amount to anything in life, blah, blah, blah. And I was very happy, I have one of the Anfa Sanfa Yoga, so I will be rich. Uh, for the record, Bill Gates has Kemdrum Yoga. I have Anfa Sanfa, either one of those. He is a richer man, so I rest my case. I think this is one of those things which have been hyped out of control. And Naam Bade Darshan Chote, please do not worry. If you have this yoga, it is not the end of the world. It can be handled easily. You will not be a poor man. Bill Gates is not a poor man. So remember this. Next one, Gandamul Gadanta. Okay, so uh, this deserves a series on itself. Uh, nakshatras, uh, now I think I will take up Nakshatras when the time comes. Uh, but Gandamul or Gadanta Nakshatra, what is it like? So, for example, I'll take an example of Ashlesha. When your sign is at the border of a fire sign and a water sign, that Nakshatra sitting on that border, it's like boiling water. So, for example, Ashlesha is the last Nakshatra in Cancer and borders on Leo. So, such people can be very angry finicky. But it is not the scam that has been created. It is a difficult nakshatra to handle, but that's not the end of the world. They have created a scaremongering out of it. And I have a funny story within my family related to a Gandamul nakshatra child. So if you want, you guys can comment Gandamul and I'll create a video on this and I'll tell you that funny story. How people are fooling clients. Okay. Next, uh, how to manage Moon Rahu placement? Okay, uh, this again is worthy of an entire series, one of the most difficult uh, things to handle. I have created uh, remedies around this, I have shared them. But the best thing that you can do is Kali and Shiv Pujan, Moon Mantra, Moon Yantra, Rahu Mantra, Rahu Yantra. And doing a repetitive task can definitely help. Chanting of mantras is an excellent remedy for this. 
writing your thoughts down is excellent for this so that you realize that things which are going in your mind are circular in nature uh, and definitely if you need medical help and for those who have this yoga particularly in 6 at 12 and if you are a female please seek psychiatric help uh, next question how to manage rahu moon dasha First thing, remember it is only an 18 month period. It is not going to last forever. All bad things come to an end. Second thing, it is all about mind games. Rahu Moon, I have seen the fear is more psychological than real. In Hindi we say, Marte kamai ghasirte jada hai. That's what Rahu Moon do. So I use an example. Rahu Moon is like watching a horror movie on Netflix, then going to the washroom with your lights off. So if a click happens behind, you are like, Bhutni ghadi mar picha. You have been living in the same house for such a long time, you have never seen a Bhutni, why today? Because it's growing with your mind. So the best thing to do is keep reminding yourself, Bhutni nahi hai. Okay, it's mind games and it will end. Second thing, uh, another example I give for Rahu Moon period is, you are on a hilly road driving. It's night and suddenly your headlights give up. Now it's a very bad idea to drive further. You will end up in a ditch or you will end up in an accident. So it's much better if you pull your handbrake, switch on the blinkers, spend the night. Maintain the status quo. Jaisa chal raha hai, chalne dijiye. Do not try any funny thing because your mind is not clear enough to make the right decisions. Do not make any big decisions. Do not make any big move. No property purchase, no job change, house change, nothing. Keep things as vanilla as possible. That should definitely help. Now, importance of moon nakshatra. You know, uh, I'll, I'll take it up in a separate video, but I just wanted to say I have been harping from the rooftops that moon is the most important planet and our ancestors knew this. You are not named after your sun nakshatra or your lagna nakshatra and I used to wonder why because lagna is more important. But the more I research on moon, the more I salute their genius, moon is far more important because your moon sign is how you feel inside, how is your manasthiti. So if you know talking to a person, listening to their name, if you know okay this person is maybe a Taurus moon, you can have a very rational discussion with them. This person is a Capricorn moon. Okay, so I have to ensure that they achieve something in life. This person is a Cancer moon. Bhai, pehle tum khao piyo, rest karo. Tell me a good joke, then we'll talk. So you sort of vibe, you know the vibe of the other person. So even the names were kept in accordance to the moon nakshatra. So if I could fix one planet in the chart, it would be the moon. If I could pick one nakshatra, it would be the moon's nakshatra. Uh, last question, why is full moon bad according to you? Okay, I know uh, Bollywood has made villain out of Amavasya, the no moon day. But uh, Amavasya is typically a lazy day. People don't have a lot of energy, not a lot happens. Uh, Diwali falls on uh, an Amavas day and people are happy enjoying. Purnima, on the other hand, uh, anybody who has worked in a hospital, in a mental ward, in a police station would know is a holy mess. Maximum number of crimes of passion happen on a Purnima day. Maximum number of road rage, bar fights particularly happen on a full moon day. There is data online, you can go and check. What happens on a full moon is, you know, even the high tide in the sea happens on a full moon. The energies are very, very intense and moon becomes very powerful. So a person with a lot of overpowering emotions will find it difficult throughout his life to uh, manage himself. Second thing, let's say you have a sun in Capricorn, good enough, but you have a full moon in Cancer. Now you have become a split personality. You will be one part, a strong leader, a ruthless businessman and achiever. Other part, you will be a bleeding heart child and you will have to manage these two personalities. Imagine the sheer conflict that happens. Some of the really successful people I've seen, they were born on a no moon or an amavaste. They are very clear, sun, moon, 
इन वन राशि कैप्रिकॉर्न है तो पूरा कैप्रिकॉर्न है कैंसर है पूरा कैंसर है जेमिनाई है पूरा जेमिनाई है सो देर इज नो स्प्लिट पर्सनैलिटी देर इज वन कंसॉलिडेटेड होल एंड दे कैन वर्क ऑन दो एनर्जी दे यूज टू इट सो दैट इज हाउ easy their life is but when you are a full moon person you have to manage two people within and anybody who has two children knows it's very difficult and when you have to do it 24/7 it's a riot so doing moon mantra in accordance with the your moon sign should help rest i can only see when i see the chart so i hope this was helpful and i know there are a lot of questions i'll do a part 2 of this video very soon Uh, and uh, please let me know if you like this one and i'll see you in the next video jai ma